John Pedro here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. In this video, there's two purposes for this video. Now, the first one is to show you kind of a before and an after uh, of a mobile home that wasn't taken care of very well. I mean, how crazy is that? We have homes that take care of us, that protect us, and a lot of sellers that you're going to run into, they don't put money back into their mobile homes. Uh, so we're going to show you, you know, when we buy the mobile home and what we did to it afterwards and then the final product, buying it for around $800 and then selling it for just under $22,000. So we're going to talk about that. That's the first point to kind of take you through the process. And then the second uh, point of this video is really a, kind of a secret lesson. And I've never shown a video about this because I never actually caught myself doing it on tape but this one we actually do so I'm not going to tell you what the lesson is I'll tell you at the end of the video but I want to see if you can see or you can hear in my speech pattern some things that I say that actually sabotage uh, this deal a tiny bit now still very very profitable but did I overpay for this home in hindsight a little bit so uh, I'm not going to tell you anymore and I'll definitely cover this in detail uh, at the very end of the video but between now and then Let's talk about this mobile home. Uh, let's actually cut to a clip of me driving from uh, my park over to about two hours away to take a look at this mobile home. Uh, we can take a look at the mobile home. We're going to do what we do, and then, uh, well, you're going to go ahead and see what we're going to do. So uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So with all the things I got going on, I'm actually taking a look at another mobile home. It's about two hours away uh, for sale. It's a three bedroom, two bath. The guy said it has one small bedroom, which I don't like, but with regards to the park that currently own, it's uh, not gonna be an issue. There's not too many two bedrooms, and the ones that do have three bedrooms are kind of smaller anyway, so I really think it'll fit, and it's a three bedroom. It's from the uh, 80s, so I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I'm um, gonna go take a look at it now. He's got a bunch of other people interested in as well. Um, it's for $1,000, so I wanna go ahead and get in there and, and you know, give them the money and go ahead and close on it. I already talked with the park manager because that was an issue. And I was, you know, thinking, well, listen, the park's not going to really want me pulling it out of there. I wouldn't want a home being pulled out of my park. I called up the park manager and she was actually okay with it. I mean, she wasn't good or bad. She was just sort of indifferent. You know, if it stays another month, you don't have to get approved, but you do have to go ahead and, uh, you know, pay that month's lot rent. So I did confirm with my movers to make sure that they had the time that they could go ahead and move it this month. It's only the fourth of the month, so they should have all this this month to get it out of there however if they can't I won't have to sign a lease agreement it won't be any penalty I just have to pay next month's lot rent which isn't a big deal so I'm gonna go ahead and take it that uh, take a look at that home now and I'll show you uh, what it looks like when I get there all right I'm almost to the mobile home park right now I just called up Stacy said that uh, he's the uh, big guy in the blue shirt so it should be easy to find him uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look through his property and see what we find. This is what a uh, this is what a mobile home for one thousand dollars is gonna look like. Piece of that, that I was talking about that, that come off the. Oh side. yeah, that's nothing. The skirting looks great. Nice fenced yard, huh? Yeah. I wonder what they're expecting for the lot to be cleared. If they're expecting all that landscaping or. Uh, no, uh, well, these, these, you know, like under the house. Real quickly, I just want to interrupt this video uh, to make a comment about why I was talking about landscaping uh, just a few moments ago. Now, I'm going to move this mobile home out of the community. Uh, and in some parks, they say that when you move a mobile home out, you have to bring that pad back to dirt. So take out any fences, take out any stones, any landscaping, um, you know, everything. Just take it all out and just leave us a blank pad. Now, that would have been a little bit costly just because I would have had to have somebody do it to remove all that. But in this particular case, that's not what the park wanted. They just said remove the home and then pull up the anchors that were holding the uh, hurricane and tornado straps down. So I just wanted to make a point of that and let you know what I was talking about when I said landscaping. Now let's head back to the video. All right, I'm going to do my best to narrate this uh, part of the video. You can see holes in the floor right here, and actually straight down to the bottom, there's plywood uh, over the top of the carpet. The carpet's actually not in bad shape, but there's soft spots throughout the home. And as you can see, just the pride of ownership of how the sellers are living. You can notice they have the new iPhone and some nice uh, big screen TV and computers. It's interesting what people spend money on. Uh, and you can just see food scattered around, clothes, and just debris uh, everywhere. Here's the bathroom. This one is not used 
used uh, currently because of, you can see the drywall's been removed, the insulation as well. The seller was telling me this was a problem due to mold, um, and that simply, I was not believing that. Um, but you can just see there's kind of the pride of ownership of what people, how they take their uh, care of their home, what they're living in, and this scares away people. You know, potential buyers that want to come buy this home, they don't want to come and look at a home like this. Now, what I'm not showing in this video is me testing uh, the appliances, making sure the hot water heater works, uh, testing the, uh, uh, like I said, all the appliances. Now, the ceilings are really in great shape. There's no leaks throughout the home, uh, anywhere in the ceilings. The walls were in good shape. Uh, we're not going to go into both the bedrooms. Unfortunately, I didn't take video of that. Now that we've taken a quick tour of the inside, let's go to the county courthouse and make sure that the taxes are current before we buy this home. Okay, so I'm on my way now to the courthouse. Uh, went ahead and made sure with my mover that everything was good. The home does not have tires, but the axles are there. Um, so that's completely fine. And then the home looks good. Well, it doesn't look good, but it looks not that bad. The carpet's savable, just the underlying floor has an issue. There's some plumbing issues underneath the uh, main sink, and there's also going to be some bathroom soft spots. All that can be replaced. Um, shouldn't be much at all, to be honest with you. Uh, going to the courthouse now to find out about taxes. The guy was kind of living like there was a there's a bird's nest in the attic that the next door neighbor slash the park owner or no park manager came out and talked to me about told us about how we had to move it seems like a you know tough but fair kind of guy so I don't really trust the seller a whole hell of a lot with regards to taxes so I'm going to go ahead and find out for sure if the taxes are current or they're not uh, the seller says that he didn't pay this year's taxes so we'll just see about that it should be about a hundred bucks and if that's what it is then that's fine um, so that's kind of what we're going to find out now. So I want to stop this video real quick and uh, kind of insert something right here because when I left the courthouse, I was going there to find out if, make sure that Stacy was the true owner, make sure that there were the only back taxes because he told me that he didn't pay taxes for the current year. So, you know, if that was the case, then so be it. But I was wanting to verify that he was the owner, that taxes were where he said that they were, and then also um, that there were uh, no liens on the home other than you know, what he said, which was none. So make sure that there were no liens on the home. So when I went to the tax office, uh, the county courthouse, it'll change depending on your area. But when I went to find out that information, uh, they told me that, yes, he indeed, he is the owner. There are no liens, but he owes three years, not just one year, three years of back taxes. Well, I did find out that they don't go after the new buyer. They go after Stacy. They go after the owner of the home that's actually was supposed to be paying those taxes. So once I found out that um, that Stacy is indeed the owner, that the title is good, that there are no liens, that the taxes don't come to me, they come to him. So moving forward, you know, I'll just have to pay what I'm responsible for. I went ahead and closed the deal with him. Now, it was originally for $1,000, uh, but only gave him $800 up front and then 200 when he removed the rest of his stuff, which he never did. So we only gave him $800 uh, for this decent three-bedroom, two-bath. So actually, let's cut back to the video uh, and then take it from, from, from this point. Well, I'm a $1,000 lighter, but I have the title, so I feel like I'm the winner. It's a good-looking three-bedroom, two-bath. One of the bedrooms is pretty small, but it still counts as a bedroom in my book. Uh, and for my park, it definitely counts as a three-bedroom. Uh, so I'm very happy now. I'm probably going to go out and celebrate a little bit, maybe stop by a bar. i got about a two-and-a-half-hour ride back uh, to the park. Uh, and uh, so I'll probably stop somewhere, maybe get a beer. And, uh, yeah, it's about that time. So, okay, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> I wanted to share that with you. Pop quiz, what is the next thing that we want to do after we go ahead and close and purchase this mobile home? So we have the title, we have a bill of sale, we probably have a few other forms. Now we want to go ahead and put the, the ownership of the home from Stacy over into your control. That could be into your trust, your trustee's name, uh, your company, your LLC, or even your private name if you want to hold on to it personally. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the courthouse and in different states you go to different areas to transfer over the ownership. Uh, of your mobile home or manufactured home but in this case we're going to go down to the courthouse uh, and I want to show you what that looks like right now isn't that the 1753 address Lawrence? yes all right so I just got out of the um, courthouse <laughs> right over there and uh, I paid ten dollars 
for the title transfer. I hope you can see that. $10 to transfer over title. I think it's important to note that I wanted to transfer the title so soon. I would have done it yesterday, um, but didn't. So <laughs> I wanted to do it today, the very next day after I purchased that, that mobile home, because if the seller, Stacy, would have went ahead and got a duplicate title, sold it to somebody else for you know another $1,000 or 10000 or whatever it is, sold it to five different people, got five duplicate titles, and then sold it five times for whatever amount of money, the first person person that goes down to the courthouse and and titles it over into their name that's the winner of the home so it's so important as soon as you get a mobile home title go ahead and put it in your name put it in your trust name put it in your LLC wherever you're gonna have it um, because the first person again that goes to the courthouse the DMV Department of Revenue uh, you know different organizations in your state um, and transfers it over into the new owner's name that's the person of record that's the legal owner now and those other people you know that's that the seller might have, you know, scammed uh, would be out of luck. They could go after him for obviously some sort of um, fraud for sure, but uh, very important to note. Now let's do some fun picture reviews. After we went ahead and fixed the home and sold it, I want to go ahead and walk you through kind of what we got. So this was the condition that the seller left the home in. Now we agreed to give them a couple hundred dollars when they left, but they were going to leave the home clean. They didn't leave the home clean, so we kept the few hundred dollars and we cleaned the home out ourselves. It took five truckloads filled like this to get rid of uh, all of the debris inside. And you can just see that the way that the seller left it, just kind of that low pride of ownership, kind of not following through with what they said that they we're going to do and again this is going to scare you know most buyers if a buyer sees this they're wondering hey what else you know what other problems do you have the carpet is actually in surprisingly decent condition kind of normal wear and tear underneath there were a lot of soft spots that's why you see that piece of plywood there in the corner uh, but all this can be just be picked up you know in a matter of minutes uh, the home did have a little bit of a smell to it, uh, but once we went ahead and removed some of the carpet and, of course, a lot of that junk, uh, some food in the, that was in the fridge, you can see that uh, this back wall has to be replaced as well. Not the whole wall, um, just the piece of drywall right there that is cracked, uh, you can see in the back. And then uh, here, well, the, this is uh, going into the kitchen, and that piece of uh, linoleum is completely removed underneath the cabinets. No leaks here. This is another picture of a bedroom that has to be, uh, you have to remove and replace the drywall. Surprisingly though, the insulation was fine. Nothing was wet, nothing was moldy, nothing was rotted. So I'm not sure where this um, um, problem came from, uh, but it has been resolved. Now, this is a Black Widow Spider, so you always want to go ahead and wear gloves whenever you're cleaning out a mobile home. You never want to be too careful, and that's just normal health reasons anyway. You know, just you never know what you're going to touch uh, in any sort of investment property, so always wear gloves. Always wear protection. Uh, and there's just another picture of the stove. The outside of the mobile home looks great. This is a three bedroom, two bath. Uh, there's a picture of a door that we, this was kind of a surprise find uh, that the door had to be fixed. It wasn't closing properly. So we got a nice used door right here. Uh, very nice, very clean, habitat for humanity, very inexpensive. Uh, and you can see it's kind of going into the laundry area, but the wood paneling around it looks great. The linoleum floor looks great. The outside we had to um, redo the decking and then you can see it's all completely completely up to code and nice and beautiful looking. Uh, the outside, this was just sort of an eyesore the park wanted us to correct, so we went ahead and got some um, uh, siding to go ahead and replace that. We couldn't match it, but it still looks really good, so we're just going to go with it. Uh, and again, there's another picture of the outside being cleaned up. We do have a central uh, AC unit on the outside. It's a nice three bedroom, two bath, again, purchased for only $800. And there's that dreaded bedroom, uh, bathroom, excuse me, uh, that has been like this apparently for just months, Stacy had said. You know, why wouldn't you put just a few hundred dollars into cleaning this, fixing it, and then reselling the home, you know, in a beautiful condition? That's where people's minds are that, you know, you just don't have the time or the ability to, to do this. Um, so obviously, you know, you, what you see is what you get. Uh, we were able to clean this all out, and right there is the end product. Uh, brand new piece of drywall, nice looking window. Uh, insulation inside. Uh, again, we did replace some of the carpet down here. That's what you see. But there's the after effect of the kitchen being cleaned up. Uh, this sort of tilted angle of a bedroom uh, to show you the carpet and just that the wall has been uh, completely fixed. Again, there's some uh, carpet, uh, new carpet in the bedroom 
and some blurry pictures of the bedroom, the bathroom. Uh, obviously, the commode works. You know, people want electric work, plumbing work, all the appliances to work, hot and cold water. Uh, here's something that the uh, handyman did, and this is just sort of an outline I wanted you to see uh, of what was spent. The total was three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars to do everything. You can go ahead and pause the screen here if you want to look through everything. These are prices that I uh, that that I. Uh, look to get. Uh, I do bid things out or I have things bid out by the job. So you can go ahead and peruse through that if you'd like. And this is just the after of the uh, the after picture of the mobile home. Quickly going through prices, we purchased it for eight hundred. We moved it for two thousand one hundred dollars. That did include the um, hookup to the water and the electric and for those to be permitted and the inspector to come out and sign off on everything. The total repairs with labor and material were three hundred, uh, I'm sorry, $3,650. Total investment of uh, $6,550. We sold it for just over 21000 at 2000 down for 330 a month for 60 months. So a total profit over five years is just over $15,000. Not too bad of a deal uh, that took very little amount of time and effort to put together. I hope you had just as much fun watching this video as I had fun making it and profiting nearly $20,000. Homes that you know look one way when we purchase them can absolutely be turned around into amazing looking homes that will last for the next 20 or 30 years with roof, walls, plumbing, heat and air, all the appliances. I mean, a good looking place. So that's the first thing that I wanted to note. And then the second thing, uh, that first thing was kind of tangible. The second thing is kind of non-tangible. And that was the lesson that I wasn't going to tell you about what it was, but that I was hoping that you could hear it. And it really happened in the first 90 seconds of this video. Uh, let's actually cut to that clip real quick. And then I want to talk about uh, why I was sabotaging myself and what that means for you and your business. I'm going to go take a look at it now. He's got a bunch of other people interested in as well. Um, it's for $1,000, so I want to go ahead and get in there and, and you know give him the money and go ahead and close on it. Did you hear that? Listen to how I was talking in the video. I was already about to purchase this home sight unseen. Now, yes, I had done a bunch of due diligence before talking to Stacy, called the park, got pictures of the home as best I could, talked Stacy to ask you know, two, three dozen questions about the home in the area. And, and I did what I could from about two hours away. But because I was driving the two hours, I was already so invested. I, I almost, to my mind, I kind of already purchased it. You know, I, I didn't even see the home yet, but I believe what Stacy said about there being so many people interested in this home. I believe that, you know, this was a three bedroom that I definitely wanted in my park. I was absolutely going to buy it. And it was only a thousand dollars. So what could go wrong? And that's the wrong mentality to have. Now, yes, this deal worked out to be very profitable, but that's still the wrong mentality to have. After 14 years of investing, it's still hard uh, to, for, for me, you know, even to just when you're in that emotional uh, point. When you're in that frame of reference, it's hard to see anything else. Now, after the deal, I, I you know, smacked myself. And I said, my gosh, I could have probably purchased this for half the price or for very little because let's face it, Stacy wanted to move on with his life. He wanted to take him and his, him, his family to Alaska of all places, but they wanted to move on. The home needed a lot of work. They were current with the park. Uh, so that was okay. But they did want to move on. There was no one else making offers for their home, I, I learned later. Uh, and I was providing them such a valuable service to get approved by the park, to take the home as is, to have a little bit of cash at closing, to definitely get approved. Granted, we were moving it out of that park. But there was a lot of things that I was bringing to the table besides just the price of the home. So although, you know, it's, it's common sense to go ahead and not become emotional about a property or to only think logically, it's not always common practice. Now, we're not gonna do anything if it doesn't make financial sense to us, and nor would a seller. So it's very important to know your situation with clarity and base your decisions on logic, not out of emotion. Maybe a little of both, but mostly 99% out of logic. I hope that really made sense and you understood uh, this, you know, both of these concepts. You like this video, please like it uh, and share it as well if it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you have to reach me, you can reach me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Thanks so much. Talk soon.